one. Mm -hmm. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Movies Galore, where we are continuing the holiday season. And tonight's uh, venture into the film world is from 1994. It is directed by John Pasquin, um, and it stars Tim Allen, along with uh, Judge Reinhold. Wendy Crossan and Eric Lloyd. So uh, let us uh, look at what IMDb tells us uh, what this film is about. Um, when a man inadvertently makes Santa fall off his roof on Christmas Eve, he finds himself magically recruited to take his place. So, first thoughts. Let's go with you, Forrest. Uh, Go to my right. Um, okay. What were your first impressions of this film? Um, okay, so this is oh god, this is my first time watching it since the since the nineties. I I'm pretty sure. Um, I remember what because I remember like watching. I missed it in, when it came out in theaters, but I remember, but I remember catching it when it came came out on video about uh about a year later. Um, at the time, I thought it was all right, just just okay. I was uh, I was just ne I was. I don't know Tim Allen movies. Like I would go watch, like, I would watch them because they were just, you know, they were kid friendly uh, mm -hmm. at the time. But it's just, but I don't know. I just wasn't really into, you know, that into them. Um, but although for, uh, re uh, uh, re watching this as an adult, it's pretty. It's actually a pretty solid, funny, solid, funny movie. Um, you know, Tim. You know, t uh, I find that Tim Allen. He like early on, at least early on in the movie, he de you, def you definitely see uh, like he's definitely like classic. Uh, home improvement stand-up comic Tim Allen that we you know that we see in that we saw that we saw in, you know, on home improvement and stand-up. I think this was actually his his this was actually his first starring role in a feature film. Right. Um, and he was you know at the time you know writing off of his success with home improvement. Um, but yeah, it was a, it's a pretty good you know it was a good you know solid funny movie. Um, nothing really nothing really. I mean, it's not something I watch you know watch every year, but. It's a it's it's entertaining. I found it entertaining. Okay, I know that um, me myself, uh, I actually went to the theaters to see uh, see this. I was awarded by the state a mentor to uh, come and guide me, and he would take me to uh, uh, movies. And this was one of the ones that he took me to, and I thought it was a blast. Um, I and uh, I had actually watched. Uh, home improvement like diligently in my teenage years and i loved his comedy uh, it was just dry a uh, 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 comedic and um i thought it worked well with his character i mean he was so darn what is it uh sarcastic exactly that's what in, I was in the very beginning of the f f f film and the, uh, then it kind of like he gradually became Santa Claus, and it was like uh, to me it was an interesting transformation. <laughs> but uh, in any case, uh, going over to Brandon, uh, what were your first thoughts on this film? When did this come out again? Nineteen ninety-four. See, it's weird. I kind of remember this coming out at the time. I was not into uh, Home Improvement, um, unlike uh, a lot of people at the time. I mean, I caught it occasionally. I didn't dislike it or anything. It was just, it just yeah. wasn't the show I watched, you know. It was just there. And I, I don't know. I, I, I never really got into this until about the time the second one came out. And then people kept telling me, you need to watch this. So I finally watched the second one. And I was like, this is all right. It's nothing special. And then four years later, I watched the, uh, the first one, finally, for the first time. Which I said, oh, this one's actually pretty decent. Yeah. I didn't uh, mind it, and I thought it was uh, fairly good. And it came across just like most of the Tim Allen's like, comedic work. And, uh, you know, like I said, it was always a decent and okay Christmas film. Uh, I didn't have the grounding that a lot of people had with him or the movie. 
but uh, I thought it was a fairly decent Christmas film. Okay. Well, what about you, Dustin? So I first saw this on the Disney Channel. I didn't realize it was from 94. Um, wow. I thought this movie was from like 2000 something, um, which I must have confused it for one of the sequels. But Probably. the first time I saw this, uh, oof, I, I was, I think it was in the 90s. It's kind of hard to remember. You know, I saw this like as a child and I thought, oh, this is okay. Like it didn't like blow me away or anything. Um, and seeing it again now, um, it didn't impress me either. <laughs> like it's a good classic Christmas movie. It's just, it feels like it was trying a little hard to be a classic Christmas movie. To get into that rotation, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it works, and it's it works, and it's good. Um, Tim Allen is kind of a jerk, from what I understand. So that did sort of dampen, well, nowadays at least, yeah. it did sort of dampen my enjoyment of this uh, somewhat. Okay, going over to Jake, uh, what, uh, uh, what were your first impressions of this film? Was this a first time watch for you? Oh, no, this is definitely not a first time uh, for me. Uh, I strangely never got this in my collection, so I made a little bit of a uh, uh, an attempt to make sure that I got... I wanted to get the three film set. I ended up settling for all three when Best Buy put them up for a reasonable price. Uh, and I feel like I probably overpaid for at least the third one, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, this was one where I have to say that, um, one of the IMDb trivia things said that for one weekend in 94, Tim Allen had the number one movie, the number one TV show and the New York times bestselling book. He was pretty much on top of the world. So as someone who was a fan of home improvement, and was watching the show, I paid attention to this. I have not read the book that was on that list, but uh, when this came out, I was like, ooh, I want to see that. And I did enjoy it. I probably saw it again um, three, four, six times over the years. I really don't know. But I know that I haven't seen it for a while now. I think Brandon showed me the third one for the first time. And that, I can't remember. Did you show me all of them or just the third one? We probably just went through all of them. I, yeah. can't, I can't imagine not just showing the third one. because That probably would uh, have been the, first, the last time I saw each of them. Um, and I think I've only seen the second one. <coughs> Two or three times, maybe three times. They, they, this, yeah, it was definitely a second viewing for the third one. I know that. Um, and they are diminishing returns. <laughs> I watched all three for this one as well. Yeah. The, um, this one, I think, Dustin, I think you were the one that said it was trying really hard to be a, a classic movie. I think that's right. I think they were trying really hard to make this a classic Christmas movie in a way that sometimes movies, you know, some movies become classics just because some movies it's clear that's what they were going for. And, but I think they mostly hit the mark. They mostly hit the mark. It was a pretty good mashup of the Disney-fied, Tim Allen humor, you know, which is very similar to the humor on Home Improvement. Mm -hmm. See, um, it was, it was show. See as that? far as Santa, uh, uh, Santa Claus move, uh, movies, the first uh, uh, movie that I remember being a Santa Claus uh, movie mm -hmm. uh, that became part of my repertoire was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And then... Yeah, the animated one? 
Uh, yeah, the yeah. animated one. And then in my lap, little, little boy. Came, <laughs> <laughs> and then came Santa Claus the mo uh, uh, movie with Dudley Moore and uh, the, uh, the dude from Third Rock from the uh, Sun. And that, uh, uh, that, I don't understand why, uh, why you guys, uh, guys call that the Mexican movie. No, that's not the Mexican that's movie. Not, no, that's, that's not the one no, I was no, referring to at all. Santa Claus, but the Mexican okay. one is also called Santa Claus. Santa Claus. It's okay, a I've never, totally I've never different movie. actually seen the Santa Claus one. Oh, yeah, it's where Santa yeah. Claus fights the devil and he runs a sweatshop in a yeah. big hole. And, uh, Children yeah. from all over the world come to work for Santa for grueling hours and no pay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to eventually put that one in my uh, in my viewing of seeing just to, uh, just to see it. But, uh, but Dudley Moore, uh, the Claus, Dudley Moore one is a favorite, but the uh, other Claus one is the not. Movie what, uh, was the one uh, the, uh, that was like uh, like the one to see every year, and then this came out, hmm. and to me, this is a classic. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not disputing it's a classic. Oh, yeah, like never I said, am I. Fine. Yeah, um, um, I, make I, it, I make it a point to actually watch this because I get his humor. I get, <laughs> uh, I get the the whole divorce thing because my uh, my mm -hmm. cousin, uh, mm -hmm. my, uh, my cousin mm -hmm. Alex, uh, his mom went through a divorce and a really bad mm -hmm. one, and, uh, um. I, th I think uh, the reason why I like this one is because it does talk about divorce. It does mm -hmm. show you a situation where, well, well let's get into the pl uh, plot line. So mm -hmm. Tim Allen it works for a toy company. Uh, do it all for you, Dolly, uh, a line of toys. And mm -hmm. uh, he's just put out a very successful doll li a line or, what or whatever. And he's late to pick up his son, Charlie, for Christmas. Well, apparently that uh, night, Santa Claus, uh, uh, while he was reading him uh, the night before Christmas, Santa Claus decides to hop onto his roof. And he, uh, and he goes downstairs to investigate, and he startles the guy, and mm -hmm. he falls to his death. What do we think about this very beginning? The with, idea of the idea of a Disney movie that starts with killing Santa Claus, I, I, I that that <laughs> is an unusual thing for the mouse. Let's put it that way. <laughs> also, they, they, I gotta say the way they handled handled Santa's death. The way I was thinking about this was, was even when I was a kid, I was thinking about this. Is how, it, it seems, it's like they handle Santa's death so casually. I mean, oh, it's an accidental they, death. I mean, they, they, he falls off the roof and he disappears. They treat it as a recurring joke throughout the movie, and they're like, because he's like, "What? But what about falling? What do you yeah. have to protect me about falling?" Yeah. And they just keep avoiding the subject. What happens <laughs> if I fall off the roof? <laughs> well, in, like, in, in any case, <laughs> in some well, not to mention, um, we it's, get to meet uh, the mother of uh, Charlie. It's surprisingly grim, like how they have yeah. how they just kill Santa like that. <laughs> yeah. Although one one thing I noticed that uh, was pointed out by somebody else was they don't seem to really miss him all that much. Like yeah. maybe, maybe he was oh. a maybe he was a bad Santa. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I'd say like, yeah. You think the elves would? You'd probably think the elves would be, would do more to mourn the guts. It would do something to mourn the guy when, but when by by the time they get back to the North Pole, uh, yeah. Or like, but even thinking about it, like as a kid, it's like I would think you know seeing fa Santa, watching Santa Claus fall off a roof to his death would, as a kid that would give me some serious. Uh, <laughs> there's right. There's another thing which I kind of sort of skimmed over. Uh, think, which uh, uh, involves uh, Tim Allen as a father uh, who, who has burned the turkey for Christmas mm -hmm. dinner and yeah, ends up having to take his son out to daddy. Yeah, this is this is something. Uh, I so uh, so to me, I always I always identify this as a father movie, a daddy movie as well, be uh, because. 
He did not plan on burning that turkey. And I'm sure that there have been many fathers who do not know how to cook, no. who, uh, who <laughs> have separate relationships, and have pretty much burnt dinner. But this just so happens to be Christmas Eve, and there's nothing fucking open. <laughs> and considering, considering that it's uh, the tool man involved, the fact that they contained the fire to the uh, oven was nothing short of a miracle. Actually, so <laughs> this is a character that I felt like is one of the flaws I felt in the movie because I felt mm -hmm. like they were trying to kind of portray him as callous. But at the same time, as a caring father, at this and trying to reconcile those two, mm -hmm. and I feel like that there was a happy medium. I don't feel like they hit it on the head as much as they as they wanted to kind of. It, I feel like there was more of them wanting to bring Tim the Toolman out mm -hmm. as yeah. a uh, hey, we got a successful show. Let's let's bring that character exactly. out. It's kind I of feel like. I really feel like they intended this to be him to be a much colder individual, and then as he learns to be Santa, become warmer as time goes. Right, and, and I, I do think um, with this one, there's a lot of similarities in the way he is presented and his relationship with his son is presented, and with Arnold and Jingle all the way. There's a yeah. lot of similarities, and I feel like they did handle it better here. Um, it's not just the, the transformation into Santa, it's the, also just the realizing that, you know, cause in both cases, you have a father that does love their son. They just are so wrapped up in their career. They're wrapped up in their career and they don't really understand that they're not giving the attention everywhere it needs to be given. Let's put yeah, that way. Well, and mm -hmm. uh, so Charlie um, mm -hmm. ends up coming down uh, stairs with uh, with him. Watches that the Santa falls, and uh, uh, they proceed to go up onto the roof. And uh, lo and behold, Comet and the rest of the reindeer are up on the roof. And uh, and uh, he's like, Dad, why don't you put the suit on? He's like, man, fine, I'll put the suit on. <laughs> you happy? Like, I, uh, I, uh, I, I hope you're happy, Comet. <laughs> yeah, this has this has a very reluctant. Oh, I fell into it, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like he's complaining the entire time, but he's going along with it. He's not. He doesn't put his foot down and like, no, I'm not gonna put on the. I'm not gonna put on the outfit. He's like, well, no, I'm not gonna put on the outfit. Puts on the outfit. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do this. Does this? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. I would not be putting on that outfit. Uh, I I've seen bad Santa. <laughs> <laughs> and so he gets into the sleigh with his son, and he whips, uh, 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 whips the uh, uh, the reins of, of the sleigh, and it takes him to an, one house over, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, he compl uh, complains that there's nothing in the bag, and suddenly there is something in the bag. And the bag ends up floating him up over uh, 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 the rooftop and down the chimney. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, he meets the dogs of the house. Mm. <laughs> so what do you think about this uh, first entrance uh, uh, into a home? <laughs> mm. What his doors? Yeah. Well, he pulls a bunch of presents out. He pulls a kayak out, and then su uh, suddenly, like that a bunch a of dogs, uh, uh, come and try to chase him out. And, and it, it, he's like, "Dad, that looked really cool. How do you feel? I f it felt like America's most wanted." <laughs> yeah, he gets, he gets shot at. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you think about that. It kind of reminds me of the uh, of the scene where they're in in Hop and they're discussing about the why they couldn't break into the Chinese market and they're being chased out by the people with like the uh, butcher knife. I, th I keep thinking about that. <laughs> mm. In any case, 
the sleigh ends up taking him to another house, uh, mm -hmm. of, of which, uh, it, it, as you can see, there really is no chimney. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you guys think about this moment? This explanation where yeah. he, he magically creates a chimney mm -hmm. at each house he goes to? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> kind of answer question. Well, because my so neither of my grandmothers had fireplaces in their houses, so it kind of I felt like it kind of answered. So for, as a kid, it kind of answered some questions for me. Right, it's probably what they were going for, you know. Because they, as we pointed out, with like Iron Saves Christmas, that question's come up before in the movies. Oh, say. you have got to be kidding! <laughs> I always find it amusing that the fireplace that magically appears was nicer than the houses that actually had fireplaces. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, but it's still kind of funny. <laughs> and he, he ends up running easy. into a little girl who uh, mm -hmm. is not quite asleep. What do you think of that little girl? Well, it's the requisite Cindy Lou Who moment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And he, 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 she's like my she's like my older cousin when he was a kid. He, like very uh, overly inquisitive. <laughs> hey, mm -hmm. you're supposed to drink the milk. Supposed to drink the milk. I'm lactose intolerant. Now go to sleep. <laughs> now I did like the callback to that. Yeah. Where, yes, where the yeah next I did year. like that they returned. Yeah. yeah. In any case, that, uh, mm -hmm. that pretty much concludes like some of the moments that you uh, see because you're supposed to assume that he's uh, he, him and Charlie have uh, gone and visited the rest of mm -hmm. the people who needed mm -hmm. presents, and that's when they end up at the North Pole. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you think about this North Pole moment where the little elf comes out and he presses some dial? And uh, they end up going into uh, the workshop. I mean, that workshop was pretty. Was pretty. Uh, it was actually looked pretty good. It looked pretty. Looked pretty mm -hmm. sweet. Mm hmm. A like, great production design. Um, mm hmm. Also had that train. <laughs> and what do you all think of the elves uh, and uh, what they lo uh, look like when, uh, when uh, 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 he finally steps out of the sleigh? Uh, well, I got to give credit to uh, David Klumholtz, who played Bernard the Head Elf. Right. Uh, he was, I mean, I love I love him in uh, you know I love him in Adam's Family Values and Slums mm -hmm. of Beverly Hills. He's he's a great. I think he's a good foil. He's a I, mean, I don't know if I say he's a I don't, I don't know if I would say he's I don't know if foil is the right word. <laughs> oh, oh, he was he was Wednesday's boyfriend in Adam's yeah. Family Values. Yeah. 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 Oh, he's been, he's been I I always thought he looked familiar, but I could not place yeah. where. And he was a top mm -hmm. brother in uh, in Slums of Beverly Hills. Right. right. Yeah, he's he's been in a lot of movies and TV shows over yeah. the years. And um, I was actually a little disappointed they couldn't get him back for the third one, but it's probably because he's so busy. <laughs> probably. But, uh, probably yeah. got too. <laughs> he was one of the friends in the Harold and Kumar movies as well. Yeah. Yeah, he was, mm -hmm. yeah, one of the stoners, one of the stoners, uh, stoners right. and super bad, walk hard, <laughs> bunch of stuff. but yeah, um, great in this movie, too. Yeah, he was fun in this one. There were a lot of fun bit players and supporting players, but one thing that I did find kind of weird is they don't really explain fully how. You know, they decided to go with kids instead of, you know, yeah. little people for the elves, which was a, an interesting choice to make. But it did make it kind of awkward in terms of aging them between the, the movies. But they also didn't quite explain how he is so clearly older than everyone else, even in this movie. Um, I, I, found, I always found that just a bit weird. Like, why is there... Like how old must he be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's more of an average height, more of an average height than the other elves. Right. So yeah. let's go back. Let's go backwards a, 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 a bit to uh, looking at Judge Reinhold and Wendy Cr uh, uh, Cr uh, Cruz's characters, <laughs> Neil and Laura. What do you think? Oh, I love Judge Reinhold in uh, yeah. movies. Uh, I, I actually loved him in uh, Beverly Hills Cop and in. Uh, <laughs> And then vice versa. I always thought that he was fast, fun. Fast in Ridgemont High. That's probably my favorite role of his. Yeah. 
I think that uh, in all probability, whoever did the costumes on for these movies probably had a blast coming up with his sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he basically just rated Bill Cosby's Bill Cosby's wardrobe. <laughs> I love how Bernard is like, did he make these sweaters? <laughs> hey, he's but, uh, pulling us into his delusions, Laura. Yeah, I love how I love, but I love how 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 Tim Allen's such a dick to him. Yeah. Well, you think about it. It's, Needle nose. For one, he he did have, uh, you know, he was you know sleeping with his ex wife, but also, also Neil he, is he, a he, very. Neil like, is one of those like very self-important shrinks who's like he, he condescends to everyone. He explains yeah. everything, at, you know, like he's talking to a child, and he he doesn't seem to be mean about it. It's just his manner. It's the way he does it. Yeah, and so yeah, I I would probably make fun of him too. I mean, he's a guy who was childhood with. <laughs> Probably three years old. Lashed out irrationally. Now, where did you hear that? <laughs> From Neil. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Scott. You know, Scott's definitely very insecure about his. Uh, you know, he's got, he's got to contend with uh, with uh, with with Neil for uh, Charlie's for Charlie's affection, and and on top of that, you know, Neil himself like has. Uh, you know, he's. He had his childhood shattered at three years old, so that's probably enough to make him make him uh, seem a little seem so seem so. Uh, I guess cold or clinical uh, as an adult. <laughs> yep. Well, anyway, anyways, uh, Tim Allen's ca uh, character Scott Kelvin, uh, which are the same letters of Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, he he ends up sp uh, uh, spending time in the wor uh, workshop explain uh, explaining that he didn't really want to be there that he just wanted to get home um and that is when bernard explained to him the clause mm -hmm. what did you all think about that clause contract <laughs> i've i've heard it described as the santa curse because if you look at the rules of it and how it behaves it's a curse yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, they probably could have. I mean, they could have used a bigger font on the card. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. But no, I got. But yeah, no. Watch, you know, rewatching it. You know, like rewatching it now as an adult. I like definitely. It. I mean, maybe it's because I've watched so many David Cronenberg movies. Um, but but now it kind of it sort of feels like a bot. Like I'm watching body. It's. I feels. It, I feel like I'm watching body horror with a Christmas with a with a Christmas with a Christmas motif. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. The uh, the fir uh, first first uh, uh, thing you see, uh, see on the card is if something happens to me, put on the suit, and the reindeer will know what to do. And that's all he read. <laughs> you need a fine print that's like barely you can you can't you have to read it under a micro under a magnifying glass. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> but in any case, he's basically to uh, told that once he puts on the suit. He's he's the big cheese, so <laughs> <laughs> um, he is stuck um, overnight at the North Pole with his son, and he gets to know a few of the elves while he's there. And he's told that eventually the list will be sent to his house, and uh, he wakes up the next morning, and Charlie's all excited that they've been to the North Pole, and he's in denial. What do you think about that moment? Hmm. I mean, that must have been had some. I mean, that must have been some. Uh, I, I, you know, it makes me wonder what they put in the what they put in the hot cocoa in the North Pole. Oh yeah, exactly. That, that uh, you know that Scott doesn't remember either. either is you know he Scott thinks it was a dream. Yet Charlie is able to. Well, Charlie believes he's a yeah. believer. Yeah. Whereas Scott's more. Grounded and t down to earth, which is what makes him <clears throat> more difficult to. Well, he's, an, he's an adult. Adult adults yeah. don't believe in magic. That's kind of the. In fact, most, most adults have probably forgotten mag uh, uh, magic. Yeah. The spirit of mm -hmm. Christmas. So, mm -hmm. ultimately, he 
it, it, it denies everything <laughs> and Charlie's in, in his own little world and uh, it, it, he gets obsessed with the idea, the idea yeah. of being at the North Pole. And then uh, Santa Claus. And both Laura and uh, Neil don't think it's healthy for him to believe mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Santa Claus mm -hmm. this old. Um, well, that, uh, the age that he is. Not, so, not to believe that his father is Santa Claus. Yeah. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. and Scott starts to uh, uh, starts to gain weight, and he uh, uh, and he starts to grow a beard um, over time, and uh, so <clears throat> they both believe that he's pretty much gone nuts and and uh, setting a bad example. And yeah. being a bad father uh, uh, to Char uh, Charlie be uh, uh, because they they don't think it's it's healthy for him to believe uh, to well, believe this well, much. Well, we have that nice little interchange uh, when when Neil and 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 Laura are quizzing him about what what did you do to put this in his head or whatever, and it's like yeah. you know Neil's like Scott, what was the last thing you and Charlie did before you went to bed Christmas Eve? We shared a bowl of sugar, did some shots of brown liquor, play with my shotguns, field dressed a cat, look for women. <laughs> <laughs> I <Yeah>. read a book. <laughs> Hollywood and, alive. I, I, <laughs> I will give it this. Mm -hmm. I mean, Charlie takes it to the extreme. He does. He's sitting there like has the whole house like rigged up to where it looks like he's has Santa sleigh and is doing this, so he gets very obsessed with it. Which, mm -hmm. uh, if he had kept it a slight bit more low key, the problem wouldn't have been there to begin with. <laughs> well, Char <laughs> I'm just looking through the quotes. Uh, uh, Charlie's excesses did did uh, yield one of uh, the better uh, burns against Neil that Scott had, where he's like, "Where is he?" Laura's like, well, he could be listening to records, jumping up and down on his bed, wearing a red hat and galoshes. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Neil's doing. Where's Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, I just want to know, wonder. So, uh, like mm -hmm. when when Scott wakes up and finds Charlie mm -hmm. in the room, just opening his presents, uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's got this like it's like a scoop, a skateboard scooter hybrid. Uh, <laughs> Like I was like wondering what that thing was. Did I, but I for, I've spent the last twenty something years wondering what the hell that thing was. Uh, and anybody else? Uh, did anybody else feel the same? Mm, yeah, I guess <laughs> I didn't really think about it. <laughs> what what thing was? Uh, like okay, Charlie, Charlie one of, among Charlie's Christmas presents when uh, like they wake when when they wake up the next day. Um, <coughs> Charlie's got this like it's like a skateboard slash it's a skateboard it's like some sort of uh like a th uh like a th three like it's like a skateboard scooter hybrid uh mm -hmm. and I'm just like wondering what what it was it was kind of like it was kind of like having three skateboards put together I'm not but I've never seen anything like it since <laughs> how the hell did I miss that. Oh, well, I need to relook at that to see what it was is. Was that when he uh, had to hook those chairs together and uh, it, it made it look like he had a sleigh in his room? No, 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 no. It was before that. It was like when when they wake up Christmas. When, okay. uh, yeah. It was morning, Christmas morning. Well, better than him vandalizing walls like he does in the second film. <laughs> well, he was a teenager. He goes full, <laughs> he goes full opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> True, now, but any ca also, a, a case. Ultimately, oh. um, Laura and Neil end up taking him to, uh, to uh, child's court and uh, end up taking his visitation rights away, which is a very down point in the movie because mm -hmm. uh, 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 by uh, by this t uh, time the list has come. The reindeer are following him around. Around kids have begun to ask him for uh, for what they want for Christmas. 
I, I love that little moment where he's just sitting in the park and he's minding his own business. And this little girl just comes and stands up on the park bench and, was, and she's like, I want ballet slippers. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I like when he's walking around on the street and he's like, you know, he's, you know, he sees two kids riding by, riding by him on bikes. One of them's no, he's like, one of them, he calls one, he's like, look at one of, calls one of them naughty. That one nice. And then this woman, this uh, hot younger woman walks by and he's like, Monica, <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I also like his uh, his doctor checkup uh, uh, because he he goes in and uh, and has a, a visit with his doctor and he's mm -hmm. like uh, uh, like I I uh, uh, what about facial hair? I mean, uh, I shave it and then uh, uh, and then I come back uh, back and look in the mirror and I'm looking like this. <laughs> And uh, before that, he, he, he's like, uh, like oh, a little weight. Mm -hmm. And then when he listens to his heart, the heart uh, 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 does jingle bells. His teammates are ass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, the heart does jingle bells. Yeah. Dead yeah. silence. <laughs> and then there I mean, it was, was, it was amusing. It would mean, I guess, I guess uh, that part was amusing. Uh, mm -hmm. not I, laugh, not laugh. Actually, as a callback to that hot chocolate that they had at the, uh, that uh, they presented when he was first at the North Pole, I realized uh, I was watching Binging with Babish uh, as he made, tried to make attempts at that 1200 year, you know, hot chocolate. And I thought to myself, that would be uh, that would be really cool. And that that particular cup is actually pure silver and uh, two hundred dollars uh, to purchase, apparently. Hmm. Which you know, I I remember the comments saying. And this is now my cup to drink all warm beverages from now on, thanks to this. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. Back to where you were. <laughs> all righty. So um, it's getting closer to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Christmas Eve. And uh, uh, he's walking by, uh, by the... the uh, the home where Charlie is living with Neil and uh, Laura, and he's looking in a, a, on the window, and uh, I think this is a very sad mo a moment because uh, because he can't really see him, uh, and it's Christmas Eve, and uh, so he walks up and he, he wants to see Charlie from for, for one last time, and they allow him, and uh, he disappears with him, uh, and so uh, uh, so. Uh, so what do you guys think about uh, about the ensuing actions that fo follow? Because they call the poli uh, pol uh, police. Um. Uh, uh, well. And, and they go back to the workshop and they work on things. And mm -hmm. uh, apparently, uh, he's decked out with a new sleigh uh, that produces what cookies and milk and. The hot mm -hmm. cocoa that, that, that hot Judy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's another point. Uh, like that, the never guy didn't get all this stuff. So did they really just hate the the previous Santa Claus? Like because they could have had all this stuff. And they do uh, say they do say in the second movie the kids are happier than they were in years with the new Santa. I, I have a I have a theory. <laughs> mm -hmm. Billy Bob Thornton after Bad Santa two. Somehow becomes the real Santa Claus, uh, and uh, that is the Santa that was uh, that was doing things up until Tim Allen's character. I, I feel like no, I feel like it was the Santa from Christmas Eve, the the killer Christmas Santa story oh. from Christmas oh, no, Eve. It's, Silent Night, <laughs> yeah. cool. it's the Silent Night, Deadly Night Santa. That's. <laughs> He's killing everybody. <laughs> no, no, Billy, no, Billy would be a lot harder to kill than that. I don't think it's that extreme. I think it's like the the the, the mall Santa from uh, Christmas Story might have graduated to being Santa for a few <laughs> years, you know, and he was 
going around <laughs> shooting kids in the face and what? I said he's I see I said that Santa seemed pretty jaded seemed pretty jaded and cynical. Yeah, he was pretty <laughs> <laughs> put your eye out, kid. <laughs> I needed the small tapioca. Right. Uh, what do you th uh, think about? Uh, well, well, let's go backwards a, a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about the business meeting that uh, that he went uh, went to and and uh, and the shit that he ordered and, and uh, about the presentation <laughs> of the Commando Santa? Oh, isn't that a good sight, kids? Santa coming down the street, huh? pants. <laughs> I always thought he had a good point. <laughs> I thought the presentation was very poignant. He had a he had a pretty good one liner. It's like, oh, you better really you really better watch out this year or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Tim yeah. Allen has good uh, is good at one liners like that. Mm -hmm. He had a very biting commentary in his uh, performance. I did like how his boss was played by Peter Boyle, but I felt like they underused him a lot. Yeah, I know. It was, yeah, <clears throat> it's too bad. At least he didn't look sad. Like he, well, he didn't look like he was ashamed to be there the way that um, Eric Idle kind of did in the other one. <laughs> and I like the excuse that he gave to, uh, to, uh, to his overweightedness. I was huh? stung by a bee. <laughs> it was a big bee. It was a big bee. <laughs> bee, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. Stop. You need help. Uh, or uh, mm -hmm. or uh, 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 Neil's line. Mm -hmm. Here's my card. <laughs> right. <laughs> One thing, though, that I've always found, I think I've always found a bit off about this movie, is that it takes place over a year, but it's extremely unclear how much time is actually passing yeah. And it almost yeah. feels like all the events of the movie seem to be in the first three or four months. Like they don't, yeah, it doesn't feel like it takes place over a year. And no. also, also yeah. actually, actually, early on, Bernard mentions to Scott that he's due back mm -hmm. in the he's due back at the North Pole by Thanksgiving, right? Uh, so I'm wondering, so I'm wondering, like the time jump. So the time jump when Charlie, actually, when he goes to see Charlie and and takes him back to the North Pole. Did that happen on Thanksgiving? Wait, was was that on Thanksgiving or on Christmas Eve? It might have been around Thanksgiving. Yeah. So Charlie had been Charlie had been missing missing for about a month. Uh, yeah, that's it's, definitely not clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Seemed, it, it seems like it seems like the police were looking for him sooner. Or it seems like uh, they you know the police were out looking for him a lot sooner. You know, mm -hmm. a lot sooner. You know, you know what I, li I, I, I like is when S Santa is taken by the police and he's down at the police station and mm -hmm. he's like, "Okay, the interrogation name scene, Santa Claus." <laughs> name we both know your name. Oh, is <laughs> we both know your name is Scott Calvin, so just say Scott Calvin, mm -hmm. so we Santa can get on with our lives. Santa Claus. Santa. No. <laughs> Actually, I just you know the Santa in jail thing has been done a couple of times we had christmas uh we had uh Ernest saves christmas miracle had this Street. and i recently watched the christmas chronicles and of course uh santa gets locked up in jail and then does an entire like uh musical Wait. number inside yeah that, that's I mean, the Ernest saved, uh, saved christmas thing you know it's like the, uh, they kind of redid uh, did that in there but uh, but i uh, uh, the way I felt ab uh, about uh, Christmas cr uh, Chronicles was like, how the hell do you put snake in a Santa suit? You know. Hmm. Well, <laughs> well, well, how, well, you, well, let's see. I mean, they're putting him in jail, so you know he's going to find a way to escape. So, uh, uh, you have to have the eye patch too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in any yeah. case, I enjoy the elves. Uh, the L E L F S. <laughs> what uh, do you think about uh, about the elves with attitude? Uh, uh, like the, I, rescue, the rescue squad that comes to get him. I don't know. They weren't. Yeah. Like, I, know, I wasn't. I it, was, it was an interesting concept, and it could have been better. But I felt like they were aiming too much at the kiddies with that particular part. I agree. And yeah. yeah. 
I enjoyed it uh, 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 because it, it was kind of a laugh at the Keystone Cops, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the uh, the uh, police in here are portrayed as somewhat stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Cops, they they just by the door. Have always been a, th a thing. Uh, so when they uh, they come to the cop uh, cop who's like this fat cop who was eating donuts, they stick a donut in his uh, mouth and then they. Spin him around. I did I like the idea of gagging a cop with a donut. Yes. <laughs> I, I then, like how the top actually does say, like, after they use the tinsel, bring him out. Like, he's like, yeah, I could use a little of that tinsel over here. <laughs> tinsel. Never leave home without it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I get a kick out of, uh, of the It's like a plasma cutter. I, 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 <laughs> I don't understand why it's uh, why it's not funny to you guys, but that's okay. It was funny. Um, it was funny when I was like younger. Yeah, but now it's just kind of like eye roll. You know what I mean? It was amusing. It was amu I mean, it was amusing. I'll put it yeah. that. Way. I I think it's still amusing to, uh, to me. I get a mm -hmm. I, I guess I, I get a kick out of this uh, this movie, and I I don't mind mm -hmm. saying that. So. Uh, when when they say elves with attitude, like my mind actually went nineties, yeah. <laughs> and I, I really do feel like again, I think uh, Dane's point that he brought up a few years ago, and I think it was a good point, is I think that there is the nostalgia factor. I feel it's a solid film, yeah. but I do feel that if I had seen this as a child, and I had been huge into Home Improvement at the time. Mm -hmm. I would today be big on this movie. It would be if I'm be more than just me looking film, at this and say it's a solid movie. It would be I'd be a lot bigger on this movie. See, I think this is one of the better Christmas movies that is out there. Uh, out there, but that's just me. Um, well, as far uh, as the glut of family-oriented Christmas yeah. films from the '90s. It's definitely one of the higher ranking ones of those, no doubt about it. Oh, easily. And it's definitely, it's a good movie. It has mostly aged well. Some of the CG, not so much, but the, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll get to that when we get to it. But uh, it, it I, I, and I agree, like for me, I'm kind of in the middle. I was old enough when the film came out that it didn't quite fire on all cylinders for me as a kid. But, you know, still a young teen, I was, or tween or whatever I was when this came out. It was still, I was young enough to get most of the humor and old enough to get most of the humor, if that makes sense. There are a few things I've gotten more as I've gotten older that they yeah. were trying to appeal to all ages. Um, and this was the one of the three movies that was not purely under the Disney banner. It was more like it was a side project for them that got co-opted, basically. Yeah, um, Buena Vista. Right. Yeah. Which is kind of like how, uh, you know, Home Improvement was a side project. ABC was a Disney subsidiary, but it wasn't Disney Channel. It was a little different. Yeah, you know, I just want to point out that Disney didn't acquire ABC until 1996. Home Improvement. Oh, years earlier. Although, oh, okay. Home Improvement was produced by Disney under Touchstone. Right, right. So it was. I, I didn't know the pure history of that. I did know that by the time I went to Orlando in '99, it was definitely under their umbrella. <laughs> but uh, it was. Yeah, I can uh, see where this is a classic. Yeah. It's like I said, you know, some nostalgia. And also this was kind of, it was the year before <laughs> Toy Story. So it was kind of this one and Toy Story were the ones that kind of cemented Alan as a movie uh, mm -hmm. actor. And, as, and a, uh, as a Disney, as a Disney uh, icon. What's that? Yeah. And, as a, and as a Disney icon. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, my, favorite, uh, my favorite comedy movie with Tim Allen will always be the Star Trek Galaxy parody Quest. that he did, Galaxy Quest, yes. Gal yeah. Yes. Toy Story and Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest is probably <laughs> the best movie, honestly. 
We'll need to do that eventually. Yeah, never <laughs> give up. Yeah, never help. surrender. <laughs> <laughs> also the best Star Trek movie. <laughs> I wouldn't say Star Trek. But uh, I would. Again, the Galaxy Quest. Think- you know, he had, he yeah. had Sigourney Weaver and Alan Ripman to play off of. Right. I mean, I was listening to a uh, a an analysis of Jingle All the Way, and uh, <laughs> and the thought about like a lot of people saying nowadays that this was the quintessential best Christmas film, uh, and it was. I think to myself, you know, that's the thing is that nostalgia factor <laughs> does have that in there. I look at it. And I saw it later on, and I'm more like, "This is all right." And but that's the thing. I mean, I love the Sa- I love Santa Claus the movie with Dudley Moore, like you like you had saw it come out during too. my it's time. A huge uh, classic for me. During my but time, during my time growing up, this was the quintessential Christmas movie to see. So I guess I would have to say that I have a lot of nostalgia for this. Uh, a movie and it never gets old for uh, uh, for, uh, for me. Uh, I, I I love the humor in it, um, mm-hmm. and I love uh, uh, the whole idea of uh, the fact that you can just kick uh, Santa off the roof and become Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, uh, what it like when he brought, I brought his dad to work and he was like, so let let me get this straight. So all I got to do is just make you fall off my roof <laughs> and I can become Santa Claus. That part was that part was actually pretty funny. <laughs> that running gag where it's like, this is your new suit. It's fireproof. It's like, but what happens if I fall off a roof? <laughs> that was a very morbid joke that they decided to keep going to the movie with. Right. The, well, you know, and you mentioned that a couple times, but I I was intrigued to look into the background for this, and I always thought of this as a Tim Allen vehicle. I'd always assumed that that was basically what it was about, but supposedly they originally had Bill Murray in mind for this, and he read the script and said, no, nah, it's not me. But I don't know. I think the way it's written it would work as a Bill Murray movie, but it would I be a whole lot know. darker. I, yeah, it would be a lot darker. Murray. <laughs> but then they would be trying to imitate Scrooge, and uh, I yeah. don't think they yeah. wanted to do that. That might have been part of the reason he passed. I, I do think been. that... It would be imitating Scrooge and Groundhog Day. Yeah. I do think well, that that true. is uh, one of the things that uh, Tim Allen did that kind of helped it and why I felt like the character was a bit yeah. confused. As I felt like this was a Scrooge character originally writing wise, mm-hmm. but they kind of adapted it to Tim Allen's uh, tool time character. Mm-hmm. So it didn't come across entirely as a Frank Cross. It came, uh, it came more yeah. as a, uh, a hybrid of a Frank Cross and a Tim the Tool Man, which mm-hmm. made the character slightly more likable at the beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then, also, uh, and also made him more competent overall. Because if yeah. this was the Tool Man, it would have, <laughs> it would have been different. That's the well, cross coming across there. Yes. <laughs> ultimately, in the end, uh, Laura uh, uh, gave the uh, papers that she had served him, and and basically put uh, put them in the fire for uh, for him. And she was like, "You can come back." Any t- uh, time, and I believe there well, is. No, a- well, first, you got to talk about their losing yeah. their boys, where they had that little, that lovely little scene with her and Neil, where she's talking about how she wanted a mystery date game so much, so much when she was a kid, and and then when she didn't get it, that was the last year she believed in Santa, and and Neil's like, I was three, and it was an Oscar Mayer. Three- Christmas came, no weenie no, whistle. No whistle. <laughs> <laughs> that's how to explain, yeah. that's how to explain Neil's uh, why he's why I feel you know that's pretty much why he I feel like that was really that you know why uh, that's kind of when I started feeling when I started feeling more bad for Neil. Uh, right. Well, no, I, I always considered him a likable character. <laughs> <laughs> I never considered him. I mean, yes, I did consider him slightly condescending, but not 
condescending in the way that you that makes the character dislikable. I thought he was a very yeah. likable character. I thought uh, he was likable, but he was an airhead. He was he, definitely he, an airhead. He, he seemed condescending. Like I said before, you can see why Scott feels the need to needle him constantly. Is because he is very condescending to Scott. He's and asking to be bullied. Yeah, he's, and now, and admittedly, I was gonna say Scott's no better to him, so I can't yeah. really. <laughs> and it's a, it makes sense that they would be antagonistic to each other. I don't really feel like Neil comes across as just this utterly pedantic character. I have definitely seen much worse. <laughs> and Bernard, he he ends up giving Charlie in the uh, very beginning when uh, when he mm -hmm. first met him, met him this really nice looking mm -hmm. glass. So Glow, mm -hmm. uh, glow that he could shake and uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and later on that came uh, came into pl uh, play and he was like, "Hey, Charlie, uh, uh, whenever you want to see your dad, just shake it, and he'll be able to come any time of the day or night." Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so uh, when he's left uh, left back at ho uh, home, he shakes it and he, he, he and he's like, "Hey, Charlie." Oh, I, I, couldn't you wait uh, just a couple more m uh, minutes? I was over the river. Mm -hmm. I was on my way to Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 that's another thing. This movie is so damn quotable. Yeah, it is. Hmm. <laughs> but um, like I said, no. Ultimately, way. they get uh, get their Chris, uh, Christmas gifts, and she mm -hmm. gets her mystery date, and he gets his meaty whistle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it ends kind of with uh, uh, what, what, what is it? The elves uh, 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 coming away fr uh, from the crowd or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Some of the children, like watching um, Santa fly off, are actually elves. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what I would have given to seeing this as a child. I think that I would have uh, loved this uh, being able to identify more with the elves, having them as children, which I think is a, and it's not the first movie that has been seen doing this, mm -hmm. but it's one of the first major movies that has been mm -hmm. doing this. So yeah. Again, they did cool. something similar with the Mexican Santa Claus, but in that one, it just made it look like a sweatshop. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, that was something <laughs> completely different. <laughs> Similar <and> yet different. <laughs> Alrighty, um, uh, have we talked about? Uh, 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 did we talk about the reindeer? I mean, I thought Comet was actually very, very good. Cool. Reindeer looked really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they yeah, were real. Reindeer, so. mm -hmm. Mentioning that Santa Claus reindeer can definitely turn out very bad. Uh, 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 I can't. You can't do it right. <laughs> I have a creepy laugh. <laughs> but, so, uh, um, if uh, we're kind of done with the plot and uh, 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 done with the characters, uh, what do we uh, want to talk about the special effects? <laughs> How are they? Special effects in this are pretty good. Yeah, especially for like a mod for like a moderately budgeted for like a moderately budgeted movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, I I was impressed with the uh, effects at the uh, time. I mean, when he sucked mm -hmm. down that uh, that mm -hmm. pipe, uh, pipe, I did not expect that, and and it totally. And I laughed my ass off when I saw that mm -hmm. the first time. Mm -hmm. But I, part it, of it, it held up. I personally feel like they could have done a little better with the effects, and some of them definitely were dated. But overall, it was good. I think the uh, the visual effects and especially sound effects, for the most part, uh, I feel like that was an area where they were they made some choices, did some things that are common practice for like family oriented, kid oriented movies. This was 1994, and, uh, so I uh, yeah. I actually think these were actually state of the art CGI at the time. I don't uh, think they could have done better. Well, 
Well, again, what I'm saying is not so much that they were bad or anything like that. Um, it's just, again, I think the way they were used, uh, one of the reasons maybe why Brandon has trouble connecting with the film, why anyone coming to it as an adult has trouble connecting, is some of the ways, especially the sound effects were used, did aim a little bit lower on the age spectrum. And so that might be one reason why I feel like they didn't age as well as it could have. Um, especially with the reindeer, some of those sound effects, again, things got worse as the movies went on, but <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah. definitely worse as the movies went on. Yeah. But in terms uh, actually, of practical, in terms of practical effects, like makeup, costuming, the fat suits, you know, that thing, most of yeah. that was really well done. And I think Forrest already brought up the point of the production design. I agree. This film had great production yeah. design. Yeah. And I, I have mm. to say, when I was looking at the uh, the reindeer stuff, uh, mm -hmm. I was reminded, to me, I thought this was like the next step that they would have gone with the reindeer from Santa Claus, the movie. Because <laughs> uh, that's the second time I actually saw reindeer with uh, with kind of a character to them. And like I said, I saw Santa Claus the movie when I was a lot younger, so mm -hmm. that one definitely sticks with me. But again, it would be similar. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. Anyone else on the uh, special effects? Um, Forrest, did you uh, have anything to say about the special effects? I think I did mention this already, but I didn't. You know, special effects. Uh, I think they were pretty adequate for a mid for a mid ninety for a moderately budgeted mid nineties movie. Okay. Yep. Um, what about the music? Hmm. I All like. Right, I, I mean, they do play a lot of Bing Cros They do play a lot of Bing Crosby throughout this. Hi. I keep thinking Santa Claus the movie, darn it, and uh, that is an excellent <laughs> soundtrack. But I, I am uh, not sure. <laughs> whether it was uh I can't remember the soundtrack in this movie. I, it wasn't so I, liked, I, I liked White Christmas by the directors um in here. It wasn't Bing Crosby, it was uh the directors in there and that was uh, 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 th uh, this one was also played I think in uh, Home Alone I think too. Yeah, yeah. So uh so I I did like that choice of music while he was driving to uh, to meet Charlie. Do 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 do. I think that was well well chosen for that. Let's see. Yeah. We have so the tree tannin uh, oh tannin bomb carol of the bells. Mm -hmm. White Christmas by the Drifters. Santa Claus mm -hmm. is coming to, to, uh, to town by the Chipmunks. Yeah, of course. Uh the Jeopardy theme. Uh, <laughs> I love I love these the Jeopardy of the Jeopardy yeah. theme. <laughs> Jingle Bell Ride. Right. Give me all your loving. Jingle Bell. <laughs> Christmas will return. Who the can Bell forget that Christmas song? Give me all your loving. <laughs> <laughs> By ZZ Top. Yep. 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 Oh, and we got a Lorena McKenna number in there. Very nice. The, so um, the music was actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, did it work for the movie? Oh, yeah, I think so. Okay, it was effective uh, without being like super, you know, you, you didn't, you don't watch it for the music, I don't think. But <laughs> is there anything else that I'm missing that uh, anyone else wanted to uh bring up about the movie? Hmm. I'm trying to remember if there's some other point I need to make. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it, it's to me, it's a good movie for its time, and I can mm -hmm. see why it's a. Their Christmas classics are classics for a reason. They're mm -hmm. able to resonate with a population of children, <clears throat> hold on to adulthood, and then be passed down to children to continue. And that makes this a classic for that reason. It does resonate very well with children. It's a well-put-together mm -hmm. movie. And I do feel mm -hmm. it's one 
that can be held on to and will be passed down and therefore becoming a Christmas classic for future. It generations. resonated with me when I was a child, and it resonates with me as a, 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 as an adult, uh, adult, and I think it will continue to resonate with me. So mm-hmm. I do recommend that, uh, uh, that if you haven't seen this film, definitely go out and uh, uh, see it and reserve judgment before you go into it. Uh, <laughs> because the surprise uh, on the other end is a, pl- a plus. And I think it does, uh, I think it does its job. Uh, I, 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 others may not think, as they, uh, think so, and it may not resonate with everyone else into their adulthood like it does me, but, uh, but I still hold the magic of Christmas in this movie. And I hope that everyone else does too. <laughs> So, right. In any ca- a case, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, that that's about it. Let's uh, wrap this up, guys. Um, so, um, yeah, Dustin, why don't you tell? Did us we do? Did we do favorites? Uh, oh, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do favorites. <laughs> um, Brandon, if there was a favorite scene, what would you take from this moment? I like the story of the weenie whistle. <laughs> I, I admit there was a, it gave a little bit more uh, depth and character to uh, the others, whereas I thought the ex-wife was kind of uh, just there. I, I really did like uh, I did like uh, Judge Reinhold's character a lot, and, and not just because I was. Uh, into psychology at the time but uh also just because i like and not necessarily because i really like judge reinhold as a an actor but um but because i just enjoyed the character and it kind of helped add depth and it was just kind of fun especially when you see the payoff at the end you knew it was foreshadowing but it was cool to see that and the payoff at the end so it was kind of cool my weenie whistle exactly (laughs) all right what about you, Dustin? Is there a favorite moment for you for, uh, from this film? Uh, come back to me in a minute. It, I'm, I'm still thinking. Okay, uh, Jake, why don't you, uh, uh, why don't you take a crack shot at it? Uh, is there a favorite I, moment for you from this film? I do have a lot of little moments I enjoy a lot. One we didn't really mention was after he burns the turkey and they go to Denny's and everything. Uh, he's putting Charlie to bed, and as he's leaving, he says he's going to warm the co- oven for cookies for Santa. And Charlie's like, don't forget your fire extinguisher. <laughs> and that was like a nice little callback there. And um, I did appreciate some of the home improvement callbacks. Uh, but also, overall, I oh, and I do want to mention that Judge Reinhold's facial expressions throughout the film were a special effect under them selves <laughs> but uh, i i have to say overall that the that's the weenie whistle bit was my favorite part that that one line christmas came no weenie whistle i was just like that's the saddest line <laughs> i loved it <laughs> Um, okay, uh, Forrest, if there was a favorite moment, uh, uh, what would you take from this? Uh, definitely, I would definitely agree with the weenie. With the, definitely, uh, I would just say, if, uh, the wean, the part with the where, uh, Judge Reinhold's uh, little monologue about the weenie whistle. I mean, that definitely, you know, definitely saw it's like definitely one of the definitely one of the more uh, like, oh, like, oh, shit, that's like really like right in the childhood moments. Um, but also, but actually, no, but the one that always kind of did stick out to me, like even as a kid, was uh, the interrogation. Was the was after you know, after Santa's been arrested, Scott, Santa Scott, he's been arrested, and he's being interrogated, and he's just being, and he's just going on with all his all his uh, different, different nicknames. names, a little wise ass about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Santa's <laughs> a slammer. <laughs> I would have to say that. Um, my favorite moments were, uh, were his whole rooftop experience, experience in the very beginning. Um, uh, uh, the fact that, uh, that after the first house he was in, he, he was like, it felt like America's most wanted. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, the, uh, his whole reaction to the fact that there is no chimney. And he's like, well, you have got to be kidding. And then that just sucks him down the damn th uh, thing. I I just get a, a whole enjoyment out of that whole uh, uh, scene. And then his whole argument back and forth with Bernard and, hmm. and, and the fa uh, fact that it, it, he's like, what if I decide not to believe? And then he looks around mm -hmm. the room and like everyone like goes sad. Everyone is just like, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bernard hits him back with this really, really like, what was the line he had? It was like, then you oh, would be yeah. responsible for yeah. taking the spirit of Christmas. Yeah. Then there now, would be millions. You don't want to be responsible for taking the spirit of Christmas, do you? Santa? <laughs> yeah. no, you wouldn't want to be responsible for killing the spirit of Christmas. Yeah. It's like, it's even rougher. But yeah, he puts that point to me. Do you want to? It's like, put no pressure. <laughs> Oh, I love Bernard. That delivery was excellent. And yeah, of course, like no, holds, uh, no holds no bar, holds uh, barred. Uh, definitely the weenie whistle mo uh, mo uh, moment. I mean, I, I I get a kick out of the whole film, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But uh, but if I had to choose three, mm -hmm. I can't just pick one. I'll right. tell you that. I didn't realize the weenie whistle re resonated with so many other people as much as I. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I, mean, how he, I mean, when you consider like how he said how young he was when he stopped believing in Santa Claus, that's like, jeez, right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's like way younger than me when I. I right. And I should mention actually, my uh, my uh, re last week, my nephew had the uh, little. Uh, my I have an eight year old nephew, and he had his and he and he had his his uh, coming to terms with with the well, he. You know, he he had he had he found out the truth about Santa Claus last week. So yeah. at eight years old, mm. so it definitely so it def so it seems like so it, so it's it, you know so it's like not ha so I guess there's that whole like you know ha how much mileage you can get out of ha out of having that uh, you know believing you know. Well, mm -hmm. you want. You want your children, if you have them, to uh, believe in the magic of everything, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, at least until you can't protect them any uh, uh, more from the reality of the world. So, uh, so it's if, if a child ends up believing in Santa Claus and uh, to uh, to an adult age, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the idea th uh, that. You have to be. Uh, you have to grow up. To me, is <clears throat> is a foreign idea. You don't have to grow up. <laughs> you just have to learn. You know about life. Technically, I mean, yeah, but is there a way of, you know, lear uh, learning about life with within reason to keep uh, keep the spirit of Christmas and yet you know. Be a person, you know. But uh, in any case, uh, I think that's all of the time that we have for today, folks. But hopefully, you enjoyed our our uh, discussion, our breakdown uh, of the Santa Claus or <laughs> the Santa Curse, if you prefer. <laughs> I mean, think think about it. You know, he gains a bunch of weight. Like his hair starts growing uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. He has no choice. Prematurely white. <laughs> yeah. And fun to follow. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to our outro. So, uh, Dustin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I am a horror collector living here in Milwaukee. Um, I show off my collection as the crypt <laughs> on the Crypt of Horrors YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram where I show stuff off as well uh, under the Crypt of Horrors. You can find me on Twitter at DuraCryptAxis. Uh, I'm suddenly going to have a lot more time, so I'm going to try to be more active on my channels. I want to try to do more reviews, um, and I might even start doing some writings. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Crypt of Horrors. Follow, follow me. Subscribe, hmm. please. 
All righty. Um, let's go over to you, Forrest. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right. I'm, my name is Forrest Bennett. I'm based in Long Island, New York. Uh, producer, uh, uh, I'm, I, pro I produce uh, indie horror movies uh, and also I survive. Also survived camp, survived a day at Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> All righty. Uh, going over to you, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Uh, Septum Sen, uh, Septum Sen versus the world. Of course, we are all about the physical media where we're at. Uh, we had a, a pretty cool experience. Of course, uh, we did our annual gift exchange, uh, which will be up uh, tomorrow. And uh, we had some fun with that. And, of course, uh, we're going to probably go a little bit further than we have been starting on, um, well, starting in the new year. I'm going to try and start working on more reviews on a few other things. But in the meantime, we had, uh, we had a pretty cool vlog cast on Monday uh, where we discussed scalpers versus resellers. Is there a difference? And uh, we were able to move through a lot of that. It was a very interesting discussion. And uh, next week on Monday, we have our monthly anime anti-climax uh, discussion on Itsudate My Santa. Mm. which will be a fun one. It's not a very long uh, series. It's actually only two episodes long, and uh, it's just a cute little one for the holidays. I might need to watch that one tomorrow just to go ahead and get to it before the holiday happens. Um, I actually swear I must have watched it already this year. <laughs> In any case, uh, I do help with Inside Movies Galore. Um and uh, I do work with the uh, scheduling. And if you are a member of any of the major groups, uh, next month we're trying out something different to where uh, we are removing um, the uh, uh, influence of outside communities on our main show. But we are uh, increasing uh, outside communities' influence on our pre-shows. Uh, and, of course, uh, this month, uh, I think uh, Forrest had changed the topic name to Days of Future Past, which is about sci-fi movies taking place in the future, but uh, that future has already uh, come and gone. Um, so we've got a, so we have gotten enough to-do votes on uh, movie collectors, talk movies with us, and uh, an amazing... And Amazing Collections Incorporated. So if you are a part of those, uh, you should vote. If you're not a part of those, oh, join up with one of them and vote. And of course, uh, we ourselves will be voting on our choices with what we think should be our main shows um, within the next week. So next week, we'll have our lineup all set up to go. So look forward to that. Oh, and uh, next week we are rounding out our holiday uh, mm -hmm. spectacular month, and it kind of it kind of works out this way because uh, we're kind <laughs> of in that in between Christmas and New Year's next week, and uh, we're going to be hitting the Tim Burton Batman movies next week. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very fun. Uh, I think it's uh, long overdue. They're good movies, mm -hmm. and, and they need to be discussed. So uh, I think that's good to look forward to. And one of them is a is a one of them is a, is a is a, an annual uh, annual Christmas viewing for me. So hey, Batman, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, what about you, Jake? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, I'm Kodabuki Jake. I am a uh, film in, uh, enthusiast, uh, movies, uh, TV, anime, what have you, uh, collector and sporadic reviewer, uh, <laughs> and of course, co-host on Septum Sin vs. the World. As he said, we've had some fun stuff going on this week, and uh, we'll have fun stuff. Uh, I look forward to our discussion of 
next week, which is kind of going to also probably be a short discussion because that show is a little bit of a trifle, but it's a fun one. So it'll be good times. Um, we won't be trying to wring uh, hours of meaning out of each episode the way we have almost every other show we've covered. <laughs> so that's good. Now, on the other hand, the Batman movie should be some good discussion. So I look forward to that and hope you all do too. I will be braving the fourth one finally to prepare. Wow. You're all yeah. watching <laughs> movies. Yes, I will watch them as well. Uh, so that will be interesting. <laughs> and um, that's in contrast to Dustin, I may have a lot less time coming up, but that is for good cause. I work is likely to pick up soon and Partly that is the new business, and so I still find plenty of time to watch stuff and have fun with you guys, though. <laughs> I appreciate it, uh, uh, but in any case, uh, thank you for sharing about yourself during mm -hmm. this holiday season. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Dick Stregge. Uh If uh, anyone doesn't know who I am, I am one of the founding fathers of uh, Inside Movies Galore. So please check out our channel and check out our other uh, uh, film discussions. But hopefully you enjoyed this one and will continue to follow along with us and help us finish off this uh, uh, season holiday uh, uh, with two superhero Chris uh, uh, Christmassy like movies next uh, next <laughs> week, as well as the animation heartic of the vlogcast. So. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely some good times uh, coming uh, up, but I also moonlight under a different channel called Delusions of Grandeur. So, uh, once you get done with this page, follow it up with uh, that, uh, that particularly chummy looking channel where we uh, where I go on about my own video pickups and my own video reviews. And hopefully you like my thoughts on some of the films that are out there. My, uh, I may not have the same thoughts as you, but uh, you can at least get a generally good idea about uh, what some of the films that I see are uh, about and some pretty unknown fi uh, films as well. So thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. And uh Bring uh, uh, bring it in the Christmas Eve with some good spirit, and hopefully you keep the magic in your hearts as well. Everyone, say good night. Good night, and happy holidays, everyone. See y'all. Happy, happy holidays. Happy mm -hmm. festival. Yes. <laughs>